Hello everyone and welcome to today's webinar, RNS Community Chat. Thank you everyone for joining us tonight for a discussion about the NeuroPACE RNS system. My name is Michael McKenna and I'm a NeuroPACE patient educator working with the patient education team here at NeuroPACE. I will be co-moderating tonight's webinar together with my colleague, Karen. Disclosing a little bit about myself, I was diagnosed with epilepsy over 25 years ago and I've been living with the RNS system for over 13 and a half years. So just for everyone, this is what we're gonna be talking about is this little device, the RNS system. For me, my device is right here. For tonight's call, we have the privilege in having joined us is Dr. Patricia Dugan from NYU Langoon Medical Center. Dr. Dugan is board certified in neurology, clinical neurophysiology, and epilepsy, specializing in the care of patients living with epilepsy. Dr. Dugan is also an associate professor of neurology at NYU. Dr. Dugan will be providing her clinical expertise on the RNS system, including an overview of how the RNS system works and the clinical use of the RNS system for patients with drug-resistant epilepsy. Tonight, we also have the honor of having join us is RNS Ambassador Christine, who has volunteered to share her own story and life-changing experiences living with the RNS system. For patients on tonight's call who already have the RNS system, we wanted to let you know NeuroPACE hosts a webinar every other month called Living with the RNS System. And this is a great webinar to ask your RNS system questions. The next Living with RNS System webinar happens next Wednesday, April 20th, starting at the same time, 5 p.m. Pacific, 8 p.m. Eastern. You can either go to the NeuroPACE website to register or via the registration link located at the bottom of this month's community chat registration email. After we hear from tonight's speakers, we will have time for your RNS questions. If you have a question about your specific medical diagnosis, we kindly ask you to please direct your questions to your epilepsy specialist. So now I'm gonna to turn tonight's discussion over to Dr. Dugan. Take it away, Dr. Dugan. Thank you so much, Mike, as always, for your very gracious introduction. So um, as you mentioned, my name is Dr. Patricia Dugan, and I'm an epileptologist. So that means that I am a neurologist who has received additional specialized training on how to interpret electroencephalograms, or EEGs, and essentially how to treat people with epilepsy or seizure disorder. I'm a faculty member in the Department of Neurology at the NYU Grossman School of Medicine, and I work at the NYU Langone Health Comprehensive Epilepsy Center, or CEC. The CEC provides really specialized care for people with epilepsy, and it's where we have a multidisciplinary team of specialists um, all assembled to take care of people with epilepsy. So we have epileptologists such as myself, neurosurgeons, psychiatrists, neuropsychologists, social workers, registered nurses, and advanced practice providers who have all received special training in the treatment of epilepsy patients, or you know, um, we are all people who have a very keen clinical interest in epilepsy. So let's move right along. Here are the evening's relevant disclosures. And so now let us talk about a very, very important definition of terms. So drug-resistant epilepsy. What is drug-resistant epilepsy? So this is also um, a term that is used interchangeably with intractable epilepsy or uh, refractory epilepsy. And it's defined as somebody who continues to have seizures despite adequate trials of at least two appropriately chosen anti-seizure drugs. It's pretty common, actually. Approximately one in 26 people in the United States will be diagnosed with epilepsy in their lifetime. And out of the people living with epilepsy, more than one million Americans still experience seizures despite taking adequate anti-seizure medication. That is, about a million Americans have drug-resistant epilepsy. So if you've tried two or more medications, there is less than a 5% chance that adding a third medication will control your seizures completely. Now let's talk about the different types of epilepsy. 
So we need to really take a moment to talk about the two main types of seizures. We have focal or partial onset seizures and generalized onset seizures. Diagnostic testing can help your doctor find out more about the types of seizures that you have. About two thirds of people with drug resistant epilepsy have focal onset seizures and these start with abnormal electrical activity in one part or a very focal area of the brain. And this activity can either remain in that area or spread to other areas of the brain. If this electrical activity spreads to involve the whole brain, we refer to that as secondarily generalized or focal to bilateral tonic clonic seizures. Now, about a third of patients with drug-resistant epilepsy have generalized seizures. These seizures begin with widespread electrical discharges that involve the entire brain at once, like from the get-go. It's important to make these distinctions because different treatment options may be appropriate for different seizure types. So we talked about CECs or comprehensive epilepsy centers a little bit. If you have drug resistant epilepsy, if you've been diagnosed with this, you really should consult an epilepsy specialist like myself, an epileptologist, at a level four comprehensive epilepsy center. As I mentioned, CECs or comprehensive epilepsy centers have teams of experts like epileptologists, neurosurgeons, neuropsychologists, epilepsy nurses, as I mentioned before, who can provide diagnostic testing and also provide and counsel you on the most advanced treatment options. Diagnostic testing can help identify where your seizures are coming from, as I mentioned in the previous slide. Unfortunately, only one in five patients with refractory epilepsy are actually referred to and seen at a CEC. We, this is something that um, I think as a medical professional, we really have to do a better job at trying to bridge that treatment gap and make sure that all um, people who have been diagnosed with drug resistant epilepsy are evaluated appropriately at their nearest CEC. So now let's talk about treatment options for drug resistant epilepsy. So as I mentioned, comprehensive epilepsy centers should by definition offer a full range of treatment options. There are many different options for drug resistant epilepsy, including epilepsy surgery and neurostimulation devices. So we have all gathered together this evening or this afternoon um, to talk about one of these treatment options to, uh, today, and that is the RNS system for drug resistant focal epilepsy. So how is the RNS system different than the other options for drug resistant epilepsy? So first let's talk about the different surgical options that are currently available. We have resective surgery, laser ablation, the vagus nerve stimulator, and the deep brain stimulator. So similar to epilepsy surgery consisting of like resective surgery and laser ablation or the so-called um, like destructive interventions, the RNS system targets your source of seizures However, um, the RNS system does this without actually destroying or injuring brain tissue, so it preserves brain tissue. Um, the VNS and DBS devices do not rely on precise targeting of a person's seizure focus, which is something actually that the RNS system um, really takes care of. Unlike the VNS therapy and DBS therapy, the RNS system recognizes and responds to abnormal brain activity. And we'll talk about that a little bit um, later as well. So you may be wondering, you know, who is the RNS system for? and whether or not you or your loved one is a candidate for the RNS system. So you may be a candidate for the RNS system if you are 18 years of age or older, if you have tried two or more anti-seizure medications and still continue to have seizures, or that is to say you've been diagnosed with drug-resistant epilepsy, if you have focal seizures that come from one or two areas of the brain, and if you have frequent seizures or disabling seizures that impact your quality of life. Now, the current recommendation is that all patients who've been diagnosed with drug-resistant epilepsy be evaluated at a CEC to see if you're eligible for other therapies, particularly surgical interventions. So, if you are being considered for surgical intervention, your epilepsy team is first going to conduct testing in order to identify or localize where your seizures are coming from. The RNS system is considered a reversible therapy. I touched on this a little bit before. This is a therapeutic intervention that does not involve any removal of brain tissue at all. 
the primary risk associated with the RNS system are those related to most surgical procedures like infection or bleeding. The rate of infection is really low, similar to other implant procedures. And I would encourage you to talk to your own epileptologist to have a comprehensive discussion about the potential risks and benefits. Now, let's talk about the RNS system placement procedure. The neurostimulator itself fits inside a small titanium tray and doesn't actually touch the brain. The leads, which are tiny wires, are placed at the seizure focus or foci if you have two. And once the device is placed, the neurostimulator is not visible to you or anyone else. The device is, um, is placed flush with the skull, so if you or are touching your scalp, um, you'll notice that it is flush with the skull, it's not sticking out, and your hair um, will cover it, no one will be the wiser. Um, after the placement procedure, patients typically go home after one to two days. So at medium settings, the battery in the RNS320, which is the, the, the newest model or the current model, is, expect, is expected or estimated to last about 11 years. Now, during a replacement procedure, the surgeon will remove the old neurostimulator from the tray and replace it with a new one. Um, if there is a new model that is currently available at the time that you are scheduled to have your um, old neurostimulator replaced, you will get the new one. You will get the latest and greatest. So the whole Replacement procedure is um, typically an outpatient procedure that lasts about an hour or less, and so our patients typically go home the same day. The longer battery life um, also means that you can expect fewer procedures, which therefore translates to lower health risks as well as lower costs for patients. Now, let's talk about how the RNS system works. So as I explained earlier, the RNS system treats your seizure focus, much like resective surgery, but it does this with electrical stimulation. And again, just to emphasize, this does not involve removing any brain tissue. Um, and the RNS system is the only device that recognizes and responds to brain activity in order to help prevent seizures. So it works by monitoring your brain activity 24 hours a day. So it is constantly sensing your brain activity and reading your EEG. The device then recognizes any unusual activity that could lead to a seizure, and then it responds within milliseconds to return those brain waves to normal. And that typically happens often before you even feel any seizure symptoms at all. Lastly, the device records brain activity and then reports that data so that your doctor can review and see what's happening in your brain during your normal daily activities and of course, of course, most importantly, right before you have a seizure or when you're having a seizure. Now, the RNS system is personalized to your own unique seizure patterns because every person has a unique seizure fingerprint or signature. So your, your doctor can personalize the device for you by pro programming it to recognize the patterns that are specific to your brain. Your doctor will adjust the programming over time in order to fine tune your treatment. And in between follow-up visits, your doctor is going to be reviewing the data recorded by the device to see how you're responding. And we will make adjustments as necessary. The RNS system is a proven treatment option. There is sustained seizure reduction that improves over time. Over 3,500 patients have been treated to date it's available at most comprehensive epilepsy centers, and it is broadly covered by most private and government insurance. So what are the benefits and results that we see with the RNS system? So in a real world study that was recently published and presented, the RNS system patients reported experiencing fewer seizures. Um, an 82% median seizure uh, frequency reduction was found at three years, more or less. Um, approximately one in five patients were seizure-free at their last checkup. RNS system patients in a nine-year study showed significantly lower SUDEP rate. So SUDEP is the sudden unexpected death of um, someone with epilepsy who is otherwise healthy. Now this is very important, quality of life improvements, because above and beyond seizure control, we also see many improvements in other aspects of one's um, quality of life. So in a clinical study, patients with the RNS system reported significant quality of life improvements in domains such as physical health, mental health, 
less seizure worry, which is huge, and improved cognition. Clinical trials have also showed that there are no chronic side effects that you commonly would associate with medication, like drowsiness or confusion, brain fog, weight changes. So living with the RNS system, this is the usual time frame, and it might be sooner or later for some. Simulation function is usually enabled or turned on at the first or second routine office visit. The device starts detecting or starts sensing your brain waves the moment that the device is turned on in the operating room, but the stimulation function requires um, appropriate amount of data that your, um, your doctor can review. So once the device is actually um, turned on in, in, and delivering uh, therapy, you shouldn't feel the device working. Um, at home, you would use a handheld wand that's attached to a simple remote monitor, which is really a laptop, uh, to collect information from the neurostimulator and then transfer it to a secure website. This whole process typically takes about five minutes. And oftentimes we refer to this whole process as interrogating the device. Your doctor can then log into a secure password protected website in order to review the recorded brain activity that you've uploaded and to monitor your treatment progress. So at first your doctor visits might occur more frequently, maybe about once a month um, or one, once every three months or so, but over time your visits are likely going to occur less frequently, typically about every three months. And then depending on how you're doing, your doctor may stretch it out even longer. Um, now, patients who have the model um, RNS320 neurostimulator, which is the, um, the latest model that is um, available right now, uh, can also receive MRIs under certain conditions. And this is a feature that we as physicians and providers are really excited about because now we can consider offering this device to people with refractory epilepsy who previously weren't eligible um, because they may have medical conditions that require serial MRIs. So we're really happy about this um, development. And so now I'm going to turn this over to our RNS ambassador, Christine. Um, hi, I'm Christine. I'm married and I have five grown children and I have five um, grandchildren. I've lived with epilepsy since 1978. The first seizure I experienced, my arm twitched and I couldn't control its movements. About a month after my first signs of seizure activity, I had a tonic-clonic seizure and was brought to the hospital in an ambulance. Several me medical tests later, I was put on Dilantin and I was referred to a local neurologist. Medica medications controlled my seizures for several years. After more complex partial seizures affecting my left arm, my neurologist added another seizure medication. Seizures remained controlled with medicine. and Occasionally, my neurologist would add a new medication or increase the dosage I was taking each day. I was fortunate that I could still drive. I had five healthy pregnancies and I would be free, seizure free for many months at a time. I was still able to work, but because I worked in the health field, I never felt comfortable enough to tell my boss that I had epilepsy for fear I'd get fired. Not because of the epilepsy, but they were probably use a different reason. So if I were having any type of aura, I'd just call in sick. About 11 or 12 years ago, my seizures were increasing and I had tried and taken many different medications. Um, eventually, I had a tonic-clonic seizure while at work. So I had to stop working and driving, which obviously changed my life greatly. My epileptologist explained that this pattern of trying new drugs, which would work for a while, but not forever, was my new normal. He told me because of the type of seizures um, I was having and where they're located, I was a good candidate for the NeuroPace RNS system. I obviously needed to think about that and um, speak with my family. A few months later, and after another medication not working as well as we'd hoped, I made up my mind. 
it was a big decision, but my family's roles were changing. Instead of me taking care of my kids and helping them out, they were now helping me out. When the family insight occurred to me, I decided to move forward with surgery for the RNS system. I had several doctor visits, MRIs, and I was approved to have the RNS surgery. In April of 2015, I checked into Mass General in Boston for my surgery. I first needed to have mapping of my brain done through a hospital proce procedure for my doctors to know exactly where my RNS electrical leads would be placed in my brain. Several days later, doctors placed the RNS device and leads in my head. I stayed in the hospital for a few more days while doctors monitored me. I recovered quickly and only had a few complex partial seizures in the first month. Everything seemed to be going well. I was thinking clearer and I felt more independent. I got into the habit of scanning my head each morning. Before I do anything else, um, I turn on my RNS laptop. I hold the mouse-like wand device up to my head where my RNS device is placed, and I allow the laptop to interrogate my information from the day before and collect all the RNS information stored in my RNS device. Interrogating only takes a few minutes each day. Once a week, I send my RNS data to the NeuroPACE computer server where my doctors can see exactly if and when I've had a seizure. And most of the time, if my data showed I had a seizure, I've noticed I never felt the seizure because the RNS device picked it up first and stopped my seizure with stimulation. Before my RNS surgery, I was very sensitive to noise and crowds. Several people having different conversation um, would confuse me very much. Malls, restaurants, even large gatherings of friends would be avoided. Not because I was antisocial, but because I'd become confused or afraid to misspeak. Also, I was forgetting where I was going or what I needed if I was out. Today, I am able to drive again. My week is spent working as a hospice nurse part-time and babysitting three of my very active two-year-old grandchildren. I'm taking less seizure meds now, and I've lost that cloudy feeling in my head that I had constantly before receiving my RNS system. In, 20, um, in September of 2019, my RNS battery was replaced. The procedure was con considered outpatient and I went home a few hours after, um, after the procedure. I wasn't exactly sure what to do leading up to it. So just to be safe, I took two days off work in advance. And I was able to spend that time writing letters, reading books, and catching up on old movies. It was like a little, um, a little vacation for me. Um, I feel as though I've been given a new independence. I can find my car in the parking lot, um, without having to write down the row it's in or searching forever. Each Saturday night, my husband and I go to dinner or another activity like a movie or a museum. Um, I've taken trips across the country on my own, which was unthinkable before having the RNS. Um, I also have begun running and recently finished my first 10K. Getting my RNS system was the best decision I've made. It's given me a better life than I could have ever imagined living. Um, thank you for listening to my story. We come to the close of tonight's uh, community chat. I'd like to thank Dr. Dugan and Ambassador Christine for being here tonight. For all of tonight's community chat listeners, there are some great resources available to you as you learn more about treating your epilepsy with the RNS system. 
or on our website at neuropace.com. You can find more information about the RNS system, learn how it works through animations, and view stories and videos of people who are living with the RNS system. And Ambassador Christine, her story is on our website also. If you don't know if your hospital offers the RNS system, you can go to neuropace.com, use our Find an Epilepsy Center tool, and simply enter your city or zip code to find a level four epilepsy center located near you that offers the RNS system. Using social media, you can stay up to date with RNS news, topics, and events by following Neuropace on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. If you didn't get a chance to ask your important question tonight, or if you think of questions after this webinar is ended, you can contact Neuropace at connect at neuropace.com to get your questions answered.